Okay, today we are going to be talking about point of view, um, what it is and how it affects a story. So you are supposed to be filling out your guided notes, which are under assignments as we go through this presentation. So I will pause or let you know when you need to be filling in the notes. Um, so it won't be for a few slides. Alrighty, so for the first part of today's lessons, we are going to talk about how um, or what point of view is, how it affects the story, and then we're going to be doing some practice together and some practice independently. All right, so point of view itself um, is thinking about in what perspective a story is told in. So when a writer begins a new story, they have to decide who's going to tell that story. So who's going to be the person sharing the information, narrating what happens, whose emotions and information and thoughts you're going to be getting. So point of view is based on who is telling the story. So who is narrating, whose perspective are we getting? Um, and in the next slide, there's going to be a song that you're going to have to access through your own Nearpod, and I highly recommend listening to it because while it's silly, it'll help you um, kind of keep in mind the different points of view because there are in total five. There's first, second, and third, and then there are three different types of third person point of view. So the song kind of gives you a silly way to remember it. So you'll have to um, watch this song or listen to the song and the video on your Nearpod because I'm not able to record the video itself through here. Um, and again, I highly recommend watching it. It's silly, but it'll stick in your memory. All right, so this is where the notes are going to start. So on your guided notes, you have an organizer for first, second, and then the three different types of third person. So first person is when the narrator is telling the story from their own point of view. So they're the ones narrating, they're the ones giving you the information and telling you their thoughts and their own thoughts and feelings. So the pronouns used that will tell you that it's first person would be first person pronouns such as I, me, and we. So I went to the store and saw um, the woman's purse getting robbed or I robbed the woman or I went to the store. All these are talking about what this person, the narrator, did from their point of view. An example I have was I was walking down the street when I saw a young boy peering into the window of a bed and breakfast. So we know that the landlady is not told from this first person. We're not getting Billy's perspective from him and we're not getting the landlady's own personal perspective. That's going to be a different type. First person would sound like, I was walking down the street and I saw a bed and breakfast, or I saw a young boy peering into the window of a bed and breakfast. It's from your own point of view, your own experience. Second person, and this one is rarely used, um, especially in literature, is when the narrator is speaking directly to the reader. So pronouns that would be used would be you and your. So it would be when the narrator would say, first you will add two eggs to the mixing bowl, then you would add in the flour, or you are walking down the street when you see a boy peering into the window of a bed and breakfast. It's letting you know exactly what you are doing. The narrator is speaking to you. Um, this can be seen in instructions and in cookbooks. And again, it can be found in some stories, but it's very rare. Um, we are probably not going to be reading much of anything that includes second person. It's still good to know and to be able to spot. So again, this will go on your organizer under second person. There are There is a notes column for you to put this first part when the reader or when the narrator speaks directly to the reader. There's a pronoun column and then there's an example column. Then we have third person limited. So there are three different types of third person and I'm gonna talk about each one specifically. So the first one we're gonna look at is third person limited and it's good to keep this title in mind because third person limited is specifically what it's saying is we're getting into the mind of one character because the perspective is limited. We're only getting one character's thoughts, 
feelings, what's going on in their heart, going on in their mind. All third person narration will include the pronouns he, she, they, them, but it's going to be a different view of what we are getting. So again, limited means limited to one character, one character's perspective. So an example I gave is Luca had liked Riley since the third grade, but he had never found the nerve to tell her. But on this day, he said to her, so would you want to go out with me? Riley blushed and said, okay. So in this case, we are getting information about both characters. We know what they're doing. We know how they're responding. But technically, we only know Luca's perspective. We only know his thoughts and feelings. We know that Luca's liked her since the third grade. Um, he's been nervous to tell her. And then he's decided to go for it on this day. We know that Riley blushes, but we don't know how she feels about Luca. So we're getting information about the care all the characters in the story but the perspective and the information on their thoughts and feelings and heart and mind are being limited to one character so third person limited perspective is limited Third person omniscient is the full knowledge of all characters, situations, and feelings. So omniscient actually means all knowing. So if a narrator is omniscient, they're knowing all the feelings of all characters and all situations. It's still the same third person pronouns, he, she, they, them, it. So the pronouns stay the same for all third person narrators. It's just what we know and what the narrator knows changes. So limited was limited to one character. Omniscient is knowing all characters. The narrator knows all feelings, um, all characters, thoughts, and emotions. And an example would be, he was so nervous, or he was nervous when he broke the window, but when he told his mom, she was calm. So we have our third person pronouns and we know how both people in this example are acting, responding, and feeling. So we know the boy's nervous, but we also know the mom is calm. So the narrator knows the information on both characters. Then third person objective, and this one is also going to be rarely used or seen, it's still good to know and it still comes up, is if you're objective to something, you're not knowing any thoughts or feelings. You have this objective point of view, you're on the outside, you don't know the character's thoughts or feelings, or the narrator doesn't know the character's thoughts or feelings. Still the same third person pronouns. And an example similar to the last one, and I'm gonna show you how it slightly changes is he, Oops, that's supposed to say sad. He looked sad, and when he told his mom he broke the window, she did seem calm. So in this case, it's objective because the narrator does not technically know how the characters are acting and feeling. He's saying that they look sad and she seemed calm, but we don't know their true thoughts or feelings. There's this outside presence of the narrator where they're looking in on the story and they're assuming and they're, they're telling us what they see, but it's objective to how the characters are thinking or feeling. So the narrator knows no character's thoughts or feelings here, just assuming. So in the Nearpod, there is a chance to practice um, together, which we did, um, where you're going to look, and you'll have to do this on your Nearpod, this isn't part of the notes, but you'll be looking at a picture that Nearpod provides, and you're going to talk about what you would see from each person's point of view. So what's happening from the different points of view here, um, and the directions and chance to practice are right on this collaboration board.
So writing sentences about what you observed happening in the backyard, one sentence in first, one in second, and one in third. This was just a good way to practice, um, but there is more to come that we did. So thinking about this activity on Nearpod. So we went through and we just started by practicing by thinking about is it first, second, or third? So before we even break down the different types of third, it's good to use the pronouns to cue you in. And for many of you, this will be very easy practice. So I felt the breeze on my face. That's first person because we see the pronoun I. You decided to take a taxi. It's telling you, the reader, what's what you're doing, what you what your thoughts and feelings are, what your actions are. That would be second person because of that pronoun you. We climbed up the tree. He was afraid of the dark and needed, oops, we climbed up the tree is first. We. So I did this with somebody else, me and you. That would be we did it. So that's first person. And then he was afraid of the dark and needed to go to sleep with his lamp always on. It's talking about someone in the third party, third person, because of the pronoun he. The queen did not step out of her home without her crown. So the queen is again a third party. She did not do that. So the queen would be third person. So this is just good practice to think about who's telling the story, what type of narrator we have before we get into practicing um, first, second, and or sorry, third objective, omniscient, um, or limited. There's also a quick check-in quiz on Nearpod um, that if you're doing at your own pace, please complete so I can check in on how many of you are doing. And then today's activity that goes along with the Nearpod. Um, is to use your notes and use the practice on here to change the point of view of the short story we read, which is, was thank you, ma'am. So you'll have to go back in, um, go back onto Teams and under assignments, there's the point of view writing assignment. And I'm not asking you to rewrite the whole story. I'm asking you to pick a section of the story. Think about what point of view it's already in. So you're going to write that at the top of your paper. And then you're going to pick a new point of view to tell it in. So I'm, I'm going to say right off the bat, it's not in first person. So the example I have posted under there rewrites the story in first person from Roger's point of view. So I'm asking you to pick a new point of view, look at my examples, read the directions, and use these notes to help you to retell a part of this story in a new with a new narrator. <laughs> 